sight singing and harmony and a jazz perspective, I had no clue. So I remember taking the placement and just getting in like level one of everything and starting from scratch. And uh, I, I think that the most I learned there was in harmony and about chord structure and progressions and and also how to continue to learn because that was one of the things that I kind of picked up on is that there's such a resource out there whether you're going to school or not. I mean, it's great to go to school because you have the discipline of going every day. But there's just so many resources out there. And the students that really applied themselves, whether it was to the library, the listening rooms, or attending recitals, they really excelled. And the ones that just kind of sat there and thought it was all going to come to them eventually weren't there anymore. Now I'd like to concentrate on left hand string. What we're going to do is we're going to work on some scale fragments once again, but instead of picking them, we'll play them legato. In other words, we'll use all hammer-ons and pull-offs. And basically, I'm going to show you a couple of different patterns, and then I'll show you how to practice them. So let's start with the legato patterns. Okay, this is how we're going to practice these. You're going to play each pattern to a watch this time for a minute each. If you feel like you need more, you can do each for two minutes or three if you'd like. The idea is to not stop. Do one exercise into the next, a minute each. And you can play them at varying speeds. Just make sure that the notes are clean and that you're using complete legato technique. Now, with the last couple, notice I did pick except I only picked when I was ascending from the D string to the G. Happened right over here. So in this case it was on the C sharp. That's the only other time you're going to pick. Also when you practice these you don't have to stay in the positions that I just showed. You can practice them on any string. You could stretch your fingers out. You can play them in any position, in any key, diatonically or chromatically. Let me demonstrate a little bit. Remember, one minute each without stopping. That's the idea. Okay, once you get those all practiced, I suggest that you do our little massage thing that we talked about in the beginning and also stretch your wrists because it's time to take those fragments and put them into expanded sequences through scales using very little picking. Once again, this is called legato. Here's the first exercise.
Okay, basically what I did is I took one of the fragments, the one that went like this, and also another one that went like this, and combined them ascending through an A major scale. Descending, we shifted up to the next position in the key and worked our way back down the scale. Let me play the two scale positions by themselves, just so you know what they sound like straight through. And you can practice that sequence between any two positions in any key or even using nonsense patterns, just shifting up by half steps, maybe something like this. Now let's hear the original pattern up to speed. Here's one more legato example. This one is in the key of E minor, and it shifts positions quite a number of times. So practice it slowly and make sure that you get those position shifts clean and clear. This also involves some right hand tapping. Here it is slow. Let's break this down into segments so you can practice each section and then put it all together. It's basically ascending in three octaves and the pattern repeats. Here it is. So it's starting on F sharp and ending on E. And then starting on F sharp an octave higher. The exact same thing, and then one octave higher, starting on the B string. So this is a perfect example of practicing segments and then connecting all of them to get the whole run, because you might just want to practice each octave at a time. and put it together. When you get to the top, you're tapping the G on the high E string, and it's basically a double tap. And then you're tapping A, and then back down to G. So you could practice that small fragment a few times and get that under your fingers. And descending, we have another three octave pattern. So you can practice each one of them as a fragment, just master that octave. <laughs> 